here in this Rocky Mountain area, I am calling to your attention the need for understanding the miracle of cosmic purity and the meaning of that purity to the soul. When the soul came forth into the realm of individuality from the heart of God, it was imbued with all of those magnificent qualities which God is, those qualities which externalize before the appearance of mankind the great grace of infinite comprehension. Precious ones, the miracle of consciousness is so beautiful to behold. Consciousness is a cup, limited and circumscribed in size by mortal men. Yet in the ascended state, men find ease in expanding the cup of their own consciousness and comprehending for themselves the great cosmic miracle of Christ purity. Oh, how mankind today, caught in the web of their own delusion, are determined that they understand life and that they are determined also that they will not be defrauded of any part of the goodness of life. Yet the most magnificent, eternal wonder that is life itself is not cognized by them, for they live in the cage of consciousness that the world has framed for them. And know it not, the darkness gathers round about them, and the light seeks to break through, and they know it not. Their ears are indeed dull of hearing, and their heart is not willing to comprehend, for they feel often bereft of the miracle of light, through seeking spiritual understanding, whereas the reverse is true, and by pursuing that which is against nature, which they call natural law, they are often violating cosmic law, for that which they call natural law is not natural at all to the deity and to life itself and to the miracle and wonder of victory, but it is only an order that seemeth to be natural unto them, which they will one day find is a pathway of death unto life. That is plain to understand, precious ones, to those in the ascended state. And it is plain to understand to those who have offered themselves a living sacrifice upon the altar of God, which means, precious ones, not only the chalice altar of God, but also the consciousness of alteration, whereby mankind are changed in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment when the trump of victory sounds into the Christ wonder of manifestation, where the consciousness expands and expands as sacred fire rings. One veil after another then, parting before the vision of that one, until God's splendor is revealed as eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, but as God then chooses to reveal himself unto man, the creation in whom he has vested the essence of himself. Precious ones, form and form density, although composed of the infinite fire essence of God himself, although crystallized before the vision of mankind's senses, is not the manifestation of life itself, but only an avenue that provides men their opportunity in the schoolrooms of life to come to that measure, that full measure of comprehension that will make life so beautiful for them that they will desire to enter more completely into the fullness thereof. Gracious ones, as I speak to you this day, I am reminded again and again of what the schoolrooms of earth ought to mean to mankind. You see, precious ones, there are those who are frightened by the fearful appearance of evil that seems to sweep the world and imbue the consciousness of mankind with all manner of shadowed concepts. 
releases from the brothers of the shadow, releases from the black magicians and those whose consciousness is like a cesspool of damp, dark things which ought never to be. Let me hasten to assure you that just as the swamps and morasses of life are touched by a glimmer of sunlight upon the waters, so these individuals too shall one day, as they advance through suffering and sorrow and the infliction of the karmic bond which they have made upon themselves, find a release through desire to find God, so the sun itself sweeps round the earth and brings its healing rays to all life. Thus let not your hearts be troubled, nor let them be afraid. For the plague, though it come nigh thee, shall not touch thee. And those of you who shall hold your consciousness upon your own mighty God presence shall find that wing itself is able to lift you above all that which mankind in their ignorance and lack of comprehension might direct at you. Remember, most gracious ones, so did they direct energy and affliction upon the prophets of God from the foundation of the earth. And this is the pain that men must pay who will link themselves to God. This is the chastening which they must have who will do his holy will. Remember, precious ones, what they did unto the Master Jesus. Remember that he also spake, saying, Weep not for me, daughters of Jerusalem, but weep for yourselves and your children. I say unto you the gnashing of teeth that shall come to those wicked ones who seek to oppress is very great indeed. And you need have no pain or sorrow for yourselves, precious ones, for the affliction which they may seek to heap upon you, for that which shall be heaped upon them by their own actions is far greater than that which they have directed against you who wear the shield of Almighty God and have his name in your forehead and in your right hand, seeking to render service in God's holy name. Thank you, blessed one. Won't you please be seated? Let me then call to your attention the great love of God that seeks to sweep the earth and exalt even the lowest form of life into a higher manifestation. God, who is life, has perpetuated himself, not only spiritually, but in manifestation of form such as you wear, but most especially in consciousness, for it is consciousness which rises above all form and substance and is the means of entering in to awareness of God. Through the consciousness, men are able to refine their senses and their understanding. Through the consciousness, when it is applied to the deity, men find a great effulgent stream of cosmic energy, filling their mind with wondrous thoughts and lifting them out of the commonplace and ordinary into the exalted state of masterful dominion. God has intended to give man dominion over the earth and gracious ones, the magnificent blue belt of power which appears to you as the celestial blue sky itself shows to you that the power of God unto salvation is a canopy over the earth. Therefore, neat these spherical domes, neat these half shells in hemisphere, there is a magnificent penetration of the golden light of the sun of illumination. And the hearts of men are touched here and there from England, from Ireland, from Scotland, from the north, from the islands of the sea, from Europe and Asia, from mountain fastnesses in South America and through the Panama Canal Zone, to your own blessed land in Arizona, in California, and in your beloved Colorado, all are touched by the magnificent light of the Son of God. And there is no spot, including the remote areas of the Gobi Desert, where the light of God does not shine in its season to bring benediction to the earth beneath. The earth is your host and hostess. The earth is the gracious 
manifestation of a terrestrial schoolroom, a place where men are taught by their mistakes to rise out of human sense consciousness. Yet there is a higher way, and we would express that higher way, the way of the spiritual guru, the way of the spiritual teacher, the great holy Christ self that in magnificent comprehension pours into the dimensions of individuality greater awareness and makes man a more magnificent person in the eyes of God. Witness, thou art my beloved son in womb. I am well pleased. The consciousness of God as a mighty cloud of glory overshadowing the Christ made him aware of the approval of the deity, the mighty father of life, the father of waters, the father of fires, the father of the atmosphere, and the father of terrestrial. All the elements do then hold concert in the squaring of the circle of manifestation. And again and again, men may be taught the mighty mysteries of life within. Outer expression, blessed ones, can never perpetuate the mighty ideals of the teacher within. Outer expression, even words, can only serve as keys to unlock the golden doors to the penetration of immortal substance from God himself. You are fed the bread of angels. You receive the word incarnate and grafted into yourself and the opportunity to behold it in burgeoning manifestation that as a tree of life you stand upon the hillsides as a great citadel of light you radiate your beams afar you are not intended to stand within the circle of limitation circumscribed by yourself or another. You are intended to break the bonds of that limitation and to be as Christ was, a towering figure, one and all. Those who would sell themselves short, denying their own birthright thereby, are those who consider that God himself is a hard man, a taskmaster, whom they must please or suffer as a result of his displeasure. Let me break this wrong pattern of human concept concerning the deity, this anthropomorphic manifestation which has held man back from achieving his victory. And let me call to your attention that this iconoclasm is necessary, for you must understand yourself as God understands you, and not from the mere human level, which has established its own limitations, lest mankind should quail before a God whom they fear. Precious ones, fear is the beginning of wisdom, but let understanding be scattered abroad and disseminated from the rooftops, that Almighty God in his great love ray manifestation speaks unto all people and kindreds and tongues and saith, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for I am the Lord thy God that will bring thee out of the land of bondage, out of the false conceptions of thyself, and into the land of promise where fulfillment will be brought about day after day in the masterful attainment of the ascension. The ascension flame is a tangible gift of God, and it will raise you into the atmosphere as it did beloved Jesus. It is no desecration of the Father to fulfill his purpose. It is but a desecration of life to not fulfill his purpose, to deny the power of God unto salvation. To all who believe and in the manifestation of that faith accept the freedom of life as it knocks upon the door of their heart and asserts itself as the voice of victory, the voice of cosmic authority. You are essentially the same as one another. You are essentially the same as God. You came from his heart, from the bosom of infinite love. 
from the eternal father-mother consciousness, and you are sons of radiant manifestation. Your mighty I am presence is the authority of your life, and you must understand the need to accept that and be free. I often hear the voices of human discord consorting with one another and asserting their own limitations, saying, we are only men. We are only men. We are not perfect. There was only one perfect individual. Let me hasten by the authority of my office to assure you that this seeming badge of humility is a despicable manifestation from the pits of shame. For mankind ought to understand the need to claim that infinite life of God and the victory of Christ consciousness and not assert the fact that they are limited and assert the fact that they are not perfect. Why affirm imperfection, beloved ones, when others are doing it all around you? Why accept the feelings of the limitation which they may express toward you? Why accept it, precious ones, when God himself would reject it? Your holy Christ self in its great discriminating intelligence manifest for you a sense of victory that must mount up as eagle wings. You cannot expect, precious ones, as the tides of life carry you forward to the point of departure from an individual embodiment, that you are going to obtain your victory simply by some strange alchemical process if you do not participate in that process by immersing your consciousness in the possibility of infinite victory here and now. Gracious ones, why will ye tarry when the light awaits your coming? The light awaits the day when you shall step forward from a sense of limitation and you shall enter into that consciousness thereof. I am that I am. So many individuals seem to feel that they have a great need to find God by a false sense of humility. They require balance, however, gracious ones, for I have observed time and time again where individuals enter into a sense of false consciousness of Christ and then begin to exhibit to one another a superior attitude. And this causes them to retreat back into the human consciousness and decide that they will adopt a false humility and a sense thereof. You must understand the need to obtain balance when you ascend into Christ's dimensions. It ought to give you greater compassion toward your fellow men and fellow pilgrims upon the pathway. When you obtain understanding, it ought to enlighten the mind, not provide a weight. Gracious ones, lay aside then the weights that so easily beset you and obtain understanding and balance from Almighty God and the balance of the threefold flame of life that is within you. That flame is your freedom. And when power understands how to act through wisdom and manifest its intent by the sacred power of love, which is also power, I tell you, you will see yourselves growing by leaps and bounds expanding your consciousness and your feeling world into areas of Christ manifestation. Until you do, circumscription and human consciousness as darkness, as a shroud, seeks to rush in every opportunity that you give it to do so. You must be vigilant, for life is not going to do it for you. You yourselves must assert that dominion with every fiber and ounce of energy that is in your being. And when you do, those around you will begin to note the manifestation of a wonderful quality which does not emanate from the personality of man, but from the person of God manifesting through man. Your own individual mighty I am presence will then have asserted a degree of its fullness, and mankind will be aware of it. Mark you that well. You will not need to say to them, do you see how much spiritual progress I am making now? For they will observe it, and they will give praise to God for it, if their hearts are correctly attuned with him. Those who do not require your prayers, and not the prayer of the Pharisee saying, I thank thee, O God, 
that I am not like other men, but the humble, contrite prayer that speaks unto the Father with authority, saying, O Father, I am a manifestation of thyself, and I call to thee to see that my brother is raised out of human dimensions into the magnificent God consciousness which is his supreme right. The authority of that one, then, to invoke for another his freedom is also the authority for him to invoke freedom for himself. And without that authority, mankind would find themselves in a very pitiful condition indeed. For there are many would-be authorities in the world who go forth in their own consciousness, seeking to entrap mankind and snare them into the pitfalls of human personality. You must never submit to these and those individuals who by their private interpretations of the law desire to bring you into bondage to themselves. You must understand that your own God freedom is between yourselves and your mighty I am presence. And there is no other authority in your life that ought to have any dominion over you whatsoever. There is a bond of interacting brotherhood which manifests between hearts, which does not deny the authority of each life stream to act for himself. Yet, in the outer world of form, and as you are now linked together in the bonds of cosmic opportunity, there is a need for temporal authority to exist in the form of laws and rules and regulations which ought to be adhered to as one respects the authority of his own divine presence. You are not on earth to repudiate the authority of God as it exists in the manifestation of nature. You are not upon earth to abuse your bodies, to abuse your minds, to abuse your spirits. You are not upon earth to abuse your soul. You are upon earth to use these opportunities and to cherish them with the great wonder that God himself manifests within their dimensions. Therefore, most gracious and beloved ones, by the authority of my being, I assert the power of your own mighty I am present to take its dominion over you now and to manifest not only this year but in all cycles of eternity to come the fullness of that perfection and its bond which will give you your victory and will not be denied that victory here and now. Precious ones, what do you think mankind are waiting for? The sinister force by its waning authority would like precious ones to have you behave as mere mortals and be morsels which they can gobble up in their carrion beaks. I call to your attention, precious ones, that God does not want it so. He desires you to go forth in Christ's victory and to manifest such infinite love to mankind that they will be literally swept off their feet by the tide of God's love. But watch that course most carefully, precious ones, that you do not permit it to be qualified by your own human sense of love that becomes a mere maudlin sentimentality and a desire to attach yourselves to someone's person. You must understand that the love of God is the love of victory for that life stream and not the mere desire to subvert them to yourselves so that they may be enamored by your own person. You must understand that the divine image must be stamped upon their face and if it is to be stamped upon their face, by stamping it upon your own consciousness, you can assist all those with whom you come in contact. And never in all eternity will it be any other way. For the law of God cannot be broken. The law of God is truth, and truth is the means to freedom. And freedom will give you your victory, because you will not function within the bonds of mortal consciousness, but within the bonds of God consciousness. And God cannot be bound, save by his own established laws, which are so designed so as to give each individual his own victory and to deny it to no part of life. Gracious ones, as I come to you this morning, I come with the consciousness of the goddess of purity. The goddess of purity and the goddess of light are functioning together in a special activity in preparation for the Easter class. And therefore, they have determined to charge into every Kala lily upon the planet and every lily upon the planet a special essential ingredient of God purity that will be exuded into the atmosphere of every flower shop, every place upon the landed area of the world where these lilies are growing, and also 
in every chapel, church, and nook and corner of the planet Earth this year in order to give to those who are able to receive it a special impartation of the memory of the great spiritual offering of beloved Jesus on that sacred day when he gave himself as an offering of obedience to the Eternal Father. I want you to know then, gracious ones, that in this forthcoming class, you will have the opportunity to enhance that many times as you, by awareness, will drink in the fragrance of the lilies and understand that the angels of God and the great ascended beings, the great goddess of light, and the goddess of purity have saturated those flowers with a special saturation this season, which has never been done before in this manner, and which will enable you to come to a greater awareness of purity and light, and the power of light and purity to free you for the ascending Christ consciousness and the spirals of the ascension flame. Gracious ones, as I take my leave of you now, I am accompanied here on the platform by Serapis Bay of Luxor, who has agreed with me that there is a need to amplify the power of the ascension flame so that the consciousness itself may be raised in preparation for the raising of the physical substance and the raising of all of the substance of the four lower bodies of man. Do you see, gracious one? When the consciousness is raised, it is preparatory to the raising of all of the vehicles of mankind. Therefore, raise the consciousness, and you raise all the total man. Ladies and gentlemen, in the name of the Infinite One, the House of Rakazi, from Transylvania, and now presently manifesting power here in the heart of the Rockies, sends to you the great cosmic love of the director whom God himself has endowed. I thank you and I call your attention to the need to hold awareness of the banner of freedom over the earth. For without awareness of freedom, men may suffer its loss. By awareness of freedom, they will honor it prize they honor, may one day in its fullness be their own. I thank you.
mankind. Men vested with cosmic intelligence. Hail, O mankind, given by the hand of infinity, the great road of cosmic opportunity. Hail, O mankind, ministered unto by the angelic host. Hail, O manifestation of the dawn, the radiant fire jewels from the heart of God were made to adorn thee. The appellation Son of God was made to adorn thee. Thou in the beginning were fashioned as Lord of the sacred fire. Domination, dominum, to thee was given dominion over the sea and the land over the very stars in their appointed rounds, and thou wast made ruler over many things. Through rebellion and rejection of every portion of the word of the Lord thy God, thou didst fall into disrepute and didst turn thy face from the sun of thy own being. The intelligence of God was given unto thee as a sacred Eucharist. And in thy mouth thou didst taste the honey of the wisdom of God. And thou wert anointed by his own mind. And through thy mind flashed a counterpart of the mind of God. And this counterpart was thy own portion, the sacred stone which as Aladdin thou couldst but touch, and the great genie of the divine mind, cosmic genius, sprang forth and fashioned within thee all that thou wouldst desire to do. Verily thou wert made a god, and in the very image thereof, and all of heaven did bow to the intent of the divine one to confer upon thee the blessing of cosmic wisdom. But ere the wafer melted in thy mouth, and ere thou hadst consumed it, the thought of a portion of that wisdom was rejected by thee, and there came as a sinuous serpent to thee the words, Has the Lord thy God said ye shall die? Verily I say unto you, ye shall not surely die. For the thought passed forth into thy mind, I am made of substance of his substance. And shall the Lord surely cast me off into the pit of abomination, into the pit of no thing, into nothingness. And therefore in thy own mind didst thou conceive the idea that God who had made thee so beautiful would not cast thee down for an infraction of rule, but would by his great mercy sustain thee, and therefore thou didst thyself, as the serpent crawling upon his belly, conceive of the thought, I shall not surely die. But this was not made as David uttered it, Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, nor suffer thine holy one to see corruption. This was made by mortal mind and consciousness, which did not take into account the great purity of God. For when men wed themselves to mortal substance, to mortal thought and feeling, when men identify with that substance which can never be permanent, they must suffer the pains of death for the death of unrighteousness which bringeth no pleasure unto God must be fulfilled by the power of light in order to maintain the cosmic word inviolate and throughout all space. For the law of life is the law of God, and in his law shalt thou meditate day and night, and thou shalt thus sustain the power of God. To permit darkness which is nothing to remain and to be seated above the power of light is an abomination of desolation 
and the power and light of the universe, as though it were one candle, should be snuffed out by the mortal wind of human foolishness if God permitted the great inheritance treasure of all life and of infinity to be dispersed by mortal thought and feeling, and therefore that feeling which is nothing to the great Holy One must itself be snuffed out, and those who identify with it shall surely die. For the Lord God alone is he who has the power of holy wisdom and the power to confer life and the power to maintain it. And only by adherence to his precepts are all sustained and maintained. The angelic host in their hearts of light are well aware of the power of the great word, the infinite law. And we fashion ourselves reverently in accordance with that law. This is only the law of pure and basic simple reason, yet men seem to be capable of distorting the pure basic reason of life and changing it by their own decrees which they would establish to sustain the rightness of their own cause without understanding the infinite purposes of God who has made of one life stream all people who dwell upon the face of this earth and all worlds to come as well as all worlds everywhere. One infinite gracious expansion of himself to then bring the deity down to bow to his own creation is unthinkable and we veil our faces even at the thought for God has wrought wonders to behold and the mind of man has not yet been able to perceive all that God has wrought nay they have not even perceived that which God hath wrought for the earth and in the secret parts thereof they have not yet begun to fathom the infinite mysteries of life and yet they dare as a moth flitting around the flame to imagine themselves to have ascended on high and to imagine themselves to have entered in to the eternal majesty O mankind humble thyself before God and he shall raise thee up bring thyself down from thy lofty position which thou hast imposed upon thyself in basic and senseless ignorance and see that God has already desired to raise thee up on high how that God has framed for each of thee the wonderful tones of the story of thy life the story of thy life is intended to be victorious and glorious the story of thy life is that thou wast framed of eternal substance that thou mightest overcome all things of sense consciousness, all things of mortal ideology, and recognize that the power that is inherent within all victorious outer manifestation is the power of light and the power of the infinite law. As I address myself to you, I say unto you that reverence for the law of God is the beginning of wisdom. And as wisdom's door opens before thee, and as thou seest the great line that leads from thy present self back to the heart of God, you will cognize that that line is a lifeline of infinite atomic substance, of infinite electronic substance, of infinite love that propels thee and draws thee as a great magnet to the very heart of thy divine self. Yet mankind gazing upon the substance of this earth, upon the falling sand in the glass, upon time and upon space, upon one another's face, and beholding there the various lineaments of the divine grace of God are able to see that in life opportunity weaves her own wondrous patterns so rare and beautiful that God is drawing mankind into his holy tapestry, a tapestry of infinite perfection where there is no room for the dark threads of mortal imperfection. O gracious ones, I am come this day 
and I will call it a summoning, for I summon the angels of my band. Jophiel's angels come and impart to mankind a spark of holy wisdom. Let them renew the covenant of themselves with their creator and as creator sons of infinite flame let them continue to reverence in all life thy holy name O gracious ones as our angelic ministrants come to thee this day to place upon thee a seal of the infinite wisdom of God it is to bring thee to understand how that life's opportunity which is so grand will bestow from God's own hand day by day pearls of great price, jewels of the sacred fire. When ye least expect it, behind the veil, tis God's desire through all the barbs of flesh you wear to make you understand his prayer, Father, make them one. For when God the central Son bows unto himself, it is to his holy law the power to overcome. Won't you please be seated? Grace impart to every heart the wisdom, light that penetrates the dark of human mortal concept. For men do see themselves not as others see them, nor as God sees them, but in a fashion of despair they often disdain the lofty presence of life above them in the air. They feel not the call of God, but in their own concerns of mortal density they become altered in purpose and filled with mortal propensity. They find delusion and confusion everywhere and know not the thoughts of God that fill the air. Let them hear now as Angelus sweeping over plain and hill the call of God to thrill their heart and make them see anew that life is not as now realized for the few, but for the many brought in drops of mercy to the seat where God has taught that men must be and see with clarity the purity of life that makes men free. I come then this day, I come afresh to teach, to purify, to recreate, not mortal density and pain that blinds the soul to God's own flame, but speaks to every heart that's here. When ye hear these words, I say, fear not, but hear, and hearing with thy ear behind the ear, see what God intends for thee, and be no longer tangled in the skeins of mortal balls of yarn. They tell not the truth, but bring you harm, I am Jophiel, Lord of Flame, Archangel come from heaven by God's name. I impart then the wisdom that will make you start afresh and hold each barrier away and understand that God is nigh. Be not afraid. Turn back the pages if you must and clean from them each speck of dust until they shine with iridescent mother of pearl, the power God's banner to unfurl, I overcome by seeing thee and all I meet and understand that I would wash the Christ's own feet and be his servitor so grand. I hold a banner of wisdom o'er this land and this very hour I say, tis time and time and half a time, yea, tis past the time for men to wake. Yet mercy, by the hand of God for his own sake, would seek to now impart to each one here a blessing from the heart of God so dear. 
Hear then and make a thrust for God's own kingdom bold, a thrust that shall remain upon the record gold. I love you. If you love me then, remember these words. I am all men. I thank you and I bless you. And I leave you with the words and power of the Lord Christ. Be ye overcomers then of all things, for lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Gracious one, from Darjeeling I come to establish a new vibratory action, an action that shall purge the earth from old effort contaminated by human concept, and shall cause mankind to understand that the sparks from the cosmic forge are seen afar, and as Babylon in her burning, so mankind's own wickedness shall cease to be as the bands of cosmic freedom are forged anew and old ideas are given new meaning as new ideas refresh the soul and the heart and the mind. You have gathered together hour after hour in memory of the great day when creation's first mighty swell poured forth from the heart of God as the effort of supreme and cosmic love, the adventure of the Lord God in creative action. From the fires of his heart to the present hour, there is always the great summoning when men are called and choose to heed the call. This day is no different than past hours and past efforts. The great summoning continues and those who can hear as children placing their ears to a seashell hope to hear the roar of ancient sea will understand that the power of the heart of the Creator to sustain with reverence his manifestation from the beginning, from the first tick of the cosmic clock to the present hour continues unabated and shall not end. For the Lord God is the law of the eternal cycles, the first cause of manifestation and the great purifier of men's hearts. In past times, men have sought through their own effort to sweep away their own past errors. Today, in this hour of cosmic grief, 
or cosmic joy, men must understand that the hour is at hand when the tragic comedic manifestations of life must come under the domination of the great master teacher, the Lord Christ. And the kingdoms of this world must no longer manifest the tragic, comic aspects of past ages which have caused such pain to mankind and would have contaminated space if it had not been for the great power of the angelic hosts in their determined efforts to keep the way of the tree of life that is the full consciousness of the mighty divine idea in all of its seed manifestations seeking to pursue the cosmic effort and to hallow space with the radiance of the Most High, the Creator and the Preserver of all eternal values and verities. I come then this day with the efforts of the Brotherhood at Darjeeling to consecrate you afresh here in the state of Colorado and to remind you that each effort of the powers of the Dark Ones to unseat you from the throne of cosmic peace must ultimately bring you closer to the mercy seat of God when you shall recognize that each effort does denote the cosmic import which we place in your actions as they are welded to our own, the implementation of God and master and man. Therefore, hierarchy continues to pour forth its radiance, the fragrance that shall hallow space, the consecration of the realms of light, where the brilliance of God is upon the mountain, flashing forth new hope to men who sit in darkness indeed, and establishing the bond of cosmic motherhood as men's hearts in contriteness and understanding seek to put aside vain and aged efforts that did not bear fruit and replace them by the virility of the cosmos itself that in the power of eternal youth desires to establish the light in the eye, the light in the heart, and the light in the mind that shall cause all men to leap into cosmic manifestation as a spiritual spark of great dimension, denying to themselves none of that cosmic achievement which the heart and mind of God aspires to for his creation and determines by noble effort to execute in all dimensions and realms of light. Here below, in the realms of denser substance, mankind are often temporarily affected by the rumblings of the human ego as it seeks to assert itself and dethrone the powers of the deity. O oh, mankind may say, how can this which is not seek to dethrone the deity? But it has ever been so, for as the torch of light has passed to the mind to aspire the mind to seek the Godhead, that mind has often sought to use that light for self-glorification and thus Prometheus bound has come into manifestation. We would bring into manifestation Prometheus unbound, the power of the boundless spirit that is consecrated to universal love and the manifestation of its full dimension of cosmic achievement. Without that, you may as well be a dried twig blown by the wind or a grain of dust in the desert that seems to have meaning to mankind but act only as a plague to the universe and all who have understanding would seek its eradication. We do not seek the eradication of mankind but the establishment of mankind in those realms of freedom where happiness and joy unbounded can sweep across the face of the earth to remold and refashion, to rekindle and reshape the social structures of mankind that all of the blessings and beneficences bestowed upon mankind by the hand of men devoted to God and service shall be established from the days of Christopher Columbus unto the present hour. Men ought to understand more about freedom from the days of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the present hour. Men ought to understand more of givingness from the days of Abraham under the present hour, mankind ought to understand more of faith 
that seeks not its own, but is also able to seek the cosmic advance, that in the avant-garde men may seek to extend the kingdom of life upon this sweet earth consecrated by the Spirit of Almighty God and determined to make of this nation and every nation a nation of molders toward virtue and achievement. The day of treason ought to be far gone. The day of betrayal ought to be far gone. But unfortunately to this present hour there are those whose hearts like even a lesser picture of Iscariot are determined to pursue their own ends. We would like to establish to you all that he was chosen of the Christ and so are ye all. But the high office which you hold and I tell you that office is real ought to be seized by you as cosmic opportunity and made real. Unless this be done, remember the spoilers are at hand to devour each little effort of achievement and make it seem unacceptable and little. And so some of you feel as though you are not worthy of the effort of Almighty God. I say dispense this feeling and reject it. I say confine it this moment to your own consciousness and then put it into the flames for purging and transmutation. You are not worthy of such a feeling as unworthiness and you are not worthy of such a feeling as littleness. You are made in the image of God and his image is God magnificent. In this image did the Lord God create you and it is the power of darkness that seeks to confine you to a narrow image. It is true that the gate is narrow but this only confines and squeezes the human ego that the essential spirit of man, that which God created, may pass through that gate into its own dimensionless freedom to hold the peripheral vision that is the vision of Almighty God for all. And now, gracious ones, beholding your efforts and trepidations at times, I wish to urge upon you great equanimity of mind that shall act as a sea of glass into which may be reflected the calm knowing of the mind of God. The realm of achievement and the realm of power, the realm of unlimited love and the realm of fervent mind seeking illumination's flame. I am come then this day to intensify upon this spot in space the vibrations of the Chohan of the first ray, that all may know who set foot upon this property that I am here and that I am establishing here a place of refuge in the wilderness of men. And yet we shall see what shall be done as hearts the world around respond to the vibratory action and currents of our light that flowing forth from Darjeeling, from the great cosmic heights of the Himalayas, would extend to your own rocky range the power of our currents to establish in America those currents of cosmic virtue that shall cause youth and age alike to respond when we speak and to understand that our utterance is a perpetual one with the Lord God of hosts as the hills are established in might and laid out by cosmic measurement, so we ask for co-measurement to be established in your own hearts that shall without fear seek also cosmic advancement as your own. So by co-measurement the mind of man achieves the mind of God. So by co-measurement the spirit of man stretches to the great depths and heights of the Almighty. So by co-measurement men establish their own world and thus are co-creators with the Lord. Eastward in Eden the Lord God planted a tree and a garden. Eastward in Eden the Lord God created and guarded the dawn. Eastward in Eden the mighty ones went forth 
and their virtue shall return to his heart. I thank you, and I bid you adieu. Pervade thou, O pervade thou, O pervade thou the earth, love's holy wisdom. Let all hear the wisdom of the king, the understanding 
that in the beginning formulated the design for each tiny seed, for each flower, for each precious life stream, for the wonders of the human eye. Capturing the light of the sun and mirrored images, transferring them to the screen of consciousness, there to be perceived as the depth of perception. Conceive then, precious ones, the great love of God and feel its permeation and penetration going out into the world of form tonight as though each tiny ray were accompanied by myriad angelic bees passing over the land in the hearts of men and bringing them an upsurge of hope a feeling of the pulse of the wind, the intelligence of God, the charge that is within substance. For substance is intelligent by reason of the penetration of God's light, and it is the light that holds and magnetizes in substance the wonderful feeling of nature in pulsation in exhilaration, in freedom, in strength, towering as a great oak, as a mountain into the heavens. And I then tonight, thinking upon mankind and the great needs of mankind, recognizing how many supplicant hands are extended, crying, come and help me, do here at Shigatsi desire to create the symbols, the melodies, the fragrances that will win hearts for God and rekindle in them the first love that dawned within them while yet children and by the freshness of the feeling of God captured for them hope and peace and joy and abundance of happiness. Therefore, it is our wish tonight to amplify that power in the world and bring assuagement to mankind for all of the feelings of grief, fear, and frustration that plague them as they open the door to the vibratory actions of dense substance and the penetration of human lethargy as it fails to lift the head of its consciousness and gaze with renewed hope upon the future and the pages that are now so clean awaiting the inscription of the passing hours. Will they be for good, for joy, for happiness, for peace? Or will they be inscriptions of pain and sorrow? Each one must determine for himself as to just what, with the pen that is in his hand, he will write upon the fresh pages of opportunity, of eternal values, of the future. Men must understand then the great primal love that in the beginning framed the world. They must understand how it is possible for them by a mere thought in consciousness to release themselves from mortal characteristics and the dust of centuries of misapplication, to recognize that the I am presence is the power and full majesty of God given to each one as the great eternal Father presence to guide and assist mankind to find their blessed freedom while yet walking the sands of earth. This is the will of God, and the schoolrooms of earth represent opportunity come afresh with each new day. You precious ones have the power within your minds to lift your minds out of sorrow and its concepts. Let them not fill the cup of your consciousness. Let them not bring you the banes of the world. The world is surfeited with those conditions and this creates the restlessness that drives men 
to seek new satisfactions, whereas with each new opportunity they usually come, as mankind would say, a cropper. That is to say, they find that the satisfactions they sought are not fulfilled. Whereas life continues to burn and the flame of life flickering upon the altars of man's being demands resolute action in the use of opportunity. Hence those who know not and abide in the bane of ignorance go forth to pattern their lives after one another. And because their imaginations and conceits have gradually led them into deeper and deeper quagmires, we find that unhappiness is often their lot. And for a moment, there is a glimmer of some hope in some new delight that may please the senses, tickle the palates, or bring them some satisfaction of triumph in a mortal way. These are delusory in the long run, precious ones, for the rewards cannot possibly come forth from those acts that do not bear cosmic fruit. It is not that God would deprive you from having joy in life. God is your life, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Therefore, you need have no fear concerning the intent of the Most High God to bring you true delight, true happiness, and true peace. It is necessary, however, for mankind to orientate themselves around the Father's concepts and ways. Else, mankind, because they do not find the satisfactions that they seek in mortality, will continue to seek to fill this bottomless pit of human aspiration. How much better it is, precious ones, to take the cup of your consciousness lined with the pure gold of God's own hope and hold it up to be filled with his own joy and fulfillment. His joy of accomplishment, a saying that is the word itself gone forth. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful in a few things, therefore I will make thee ruler over many things. Here in Shigatsi, we have been cooperating with your beloved brother Moria L. in seeking to weave a net of divine love wisdom over the world. Precious ones, the hearts of men are so distracted by the many baubles and trinkets dangled constantly before their eyes by modern world conditions. Also, they are so much afflicted by the bane of fear that often they tremble in constant expectancy of some new tragedy to strike them, their families, their communities, their nation, or even the entire world, thus depriving them of the peace of mind which enables them to seek the mature wisdom of a son of God. I call to your attention tonight, most gracious ones, the need to follow the masters in the regeneration. The masters of wisdom have taught the regeneration of Christ consciousness, the vivifying power of the sacred fire in the form manifestation of holy wisdom. The ability of holy wisdom to impart peace to the mind is very great. Yet the injunction, study to show thyself approved unto God, must be fulfilled. There are many individuals, precious ones upon this planet, who constantly seek to please man, but are not overly concerned, that is overly much, with the desire to please God. Therefore it is our desire this night to intensify the application of every chila towards studying to show himself approved unto God. The old pathways and boundaries that you have been taught from childhood on often are lacking in the depth of that wisdom which is requisite for this hour. The wisdom that is requisite for this hour is that which frees you from the power of the shadowed substance in your own minds and worlds 
and in the charges of negative energy which are released to you in a very impersonal manner from many among mankind who unwittingly do the bidding of the sinister force and release those thoughts and feelings into the atmosphere of the planet which when they return to those individuals will surely bring them distress and turmoil of mind. It is our desire then to pour the gentle unguents of peace upon the hearts of those who seek to pursue the higher way of life that they may manifest those virtues which create cosmic dignity in the consciousness and character of men which was manifested by the ascended masters and in this connection I ask you precious ones if you were this hour to meet your own beloved Saint Germain and find him here in full manifestation robed even in a garment similar to your own but upon this platform do you think that he would manifest any quality except that of cosmic grace surely you must know that the ascended masters have overcome all thoughts and feelings of a personal nature and they are completely dedicated and have relegated their life to the fulfillment of the divine purposes everywhere they are hands and feet to the almighty and where necessary, I assure you that even cosmic beings would sweep the dust from beneath your feet if it would impede your progress and assist you in finding your way over that minute layer of dust that for some seems to be almost a mountain of adversity. Gracious ones, the idea and concept of the word relativity is so essential in men's understanding that they recognize that that which may seem very slight to one may be gross unto another. These are individual, personalized human characteristics, but they do exist, and therefore they ought to be taken into account by those who seek to live and dwell in harmony with one another. Because, you see, gracious ones, as we seek to take you where we find you and raise you to the highest levels of spiritual achievement, we do not find you all at the same level, and therefore we often are compelled by circumstance to place one chila who is very advanced alongside of another chila who is scarcely beginning. This sometimes creates complex problems because the physical self of individuals does not seem so much different and the Christly qualities are often themselves not apparent being much a part of the interior world of the individual. Even the greatest individuals will sometimes react under stress and strain in a manner that may not be becoming to the offices which they hold. And I reference here not only men of ecclesiastical authority, but men in the world of form, such as political figures and businessmen who hold high positions. Remember, precious ones, that accomplishment in one field does not mean that men are always accomplished in every field of perfectionment. There are times when individuals in the business world are most capable to govern a business empire, yet they are unable to regulate their own household. You see, precious ones, all of the many strange facets of character that exist in the world of men must be taken into account in the amalgamation of hearts as we seek to blend hearts in the great boon of cosmic love. The moment that individuals relinquish the strands that bind them, that tether them to their own mortal concepts of identity, the moment they let go of all of that, they can very easily rise in consciousness to become a Christ momentarily and glimpse his perfection. But often, with the first strong wind and downdraft, they find themselves flat upon their face, reeking with the stench of the mud itself, which exists beneath the feet of those who are raised up into a higher state of consciousness but still have a residue of untransmuted substance in their worlds which must be transmuted by the sacred fire. In the name of God, I say to each one of you as children of the sun, come to realize that opportunity is given to you because of necessity. Opportunity is born of necessity. If you required no teaching, if you required no knocks, no experiences whatsoever, 
that come to mankind in order to curtail some of your own wrong thoughts and feelings? Do you suppose that life would bring them to you? Each such thing, precious ones, each such negative condition, comes to you for redemption. And if you would only understand that, precious ones, you would call upon your own mighty I Am Presence and welcome each such opportunity, not as one to rebel or to chafe at the bit, but as an opportunity to say unto that occasion, I see in you an opportunity for my perfection and my release from all fear and from all negative qualities. Therefore, I welcome you. I have created in the past these binding forms of thought and feeling which have brought grief and sadness to others and to myself. Now I seek to transmute them by the light. Come, little bit of shadow, into my world, but penetrate not my aura. Come and stand before me as I blaze my love and light at you to release and to purify you from all negation and change you in the twinkling of an eye as I laugh, as I rejoice, as I wink at this opportunity even as God winks at ignorance. You have drunk deeply of the draught of mortal ignorance, little bit of shadow, shadowed substance, but the energy, the core of substance on which you are spun is God's energy and belongs to him. You cannot have this energy any longer. I will not permit it because I am a child of the sun and the light. Therefore I call to the winds of the Holy Spirit to separate you now, all oh, you beautiful light, out of the shadow and return you to the heart of the Father. And I say to the residual substance, change your face toward the sun and become as God is. You also are a part of God and you cannot rebel continuously against the light and have existence. If you continue in the downward course that you are pursuing, you will become as nothing, as shaft blown before the wind. Therefore I say, as I preach unto you, you are God's energy also. You must turn yourselves over to him and bow the knee of your energy to the great God self and return to the sun as little specks of gold that you may become burnished by his shining. This is the will of the Father, precious one that you welcome each opportunity to correct and to mend all flaw within your character. You should not chafe then at the bit or burn in your conscience because of these conditions. These pricks, precious ones, that come to you are the pricks of the living gospel of the ascended master Jesus and of all ascended masters who are one. You see, St. Paul himself encountered this selfsame condition. And the words of the Christ came unto him, saying, It is hard for thee, Saul, to kick against the pricks. For you see, precious ones, mankind have a conscience, and that conscience is the divine science of freedom. The purpose of the conscience is to awaken mankind to the error of his ways, so that he does not invest his energy in those conditions which will prove in the long run to be wearing and tearing on his soul and its progress. Rather, he should submit himself to the great God presence and with joy and peace in his heart seek to purify not only his own world but the world of others. Let us take the way of the transgressor which is admittedly hard. The transgressor, precious ones, may often be aggressive in his own way. He may be very determined to pursue a path that is not to his own best interest. But when he ponders and contemplates, when he meditates upon the greatness of the God design he, of his own being, he will then desire freedom more than any other condition in the world. And he will no longer be content to abide in the domain of the little self, the circumscribed circle that is so close to the ego and the identity that it is the density of the ego in manifestation and unless it bow its knee and acknowledge its own holy Christ self as Lord within its own domain it can never do aught except come to naught therefore mankind must realize one and all 
that submission to the will of God is to make the mission of the divine one predominant in the world of the chila then because the purposes are no longer the human purposes but are the purposes of God all the universe rushes in to do the bidding of that one and so the miracles of perfection that have taken place all over the world in past history those miracles of love the healings of body the comforts of mind and soul blessings extended in the name of God brothers of the sun and of the wind children of the light and the dawn miracles beyond those you have read or heard of unrecorded in the chronicles of men all these are brought about because God wills it so and God wills it so because in his great love he desires to impart his wisdom that men may so act as he does and have the power to do so without the wisdom of God men would be caught completely in the nets and snares which they have lain for one another but by the power of freedom, as freedom reaches into the mind and heart and stirs there the memory of the old days of the sacred fire, men find a yearning arising within their consciousness to be of service, not only in outer realms, but also in the inner realms and the ways of the Christ and the ways of the peaceful ones and the ways of the builders and the ways of the constructors of new pathways of virtue for all men upon this planet. The day is coming soon when knowledge of God will be more and more intensified. But I assure you, precious ones, that the old matrices, the old forms, the old dogmas must of necessity yield to the incoming regeneration of the Christ. The way showers from on high cannot possibly utilize these old matrices for they have become, according to human standards, symbols turned to stone they were once living creations of the most high God now they are dumb stone and those who heed them find no life within them but only the apparition of dead centuries of service in sculpturing dogma according to the fashion of the human intellect or human circumstance to bring to light then these facts is our intent this night that you may recognize the need to sweep clean the threshing floor of the Lord and prepare for the great moments of cosmic regeneration when the fires of life within your own hearts and minds are stirred as never before and when you come to understand that the Christ walks with you today and is in your midst then as your hearts burn within you, as you begin to feel the radiance of his presence, as you begin to understand that the pattern of life is progress and the unfoldment of that progress in you individually will bring about the renaissance of hope all over the world. You see that life begins with you and that you begin with life and you understand as the word has been spoken among men, you savvy that God is life and that you are God. When this great fact dawns upon your consciousness, the mighty I am presence becomes your goal. You aim high because you know that at those untrammeled heights is the pattern you seek. For human destiny, at its best is often surfeited with sorrow and tears but the pathway of light while it be not free from punishment to the little self to the finite self in the growth process the expansion process is nevertheless necessary and men must recognize that in severing their connections with the earth which they must one day do anyway they certainly must be willing to let go of themselves Unless men can let go of their little self, they cannot find the greater self. For as my compatriot who stands here beside me tonight has once said, he who seeks to save his life shall lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake 
shall find it again. Your beloved Jesus just said unto you. And dispersing it within my own words. The framework thereof. When you no longer are. And only God is. Then the pathway will seem sweet, fragrant, and joyous. For all problem lies within the domain of the ego. And it is the will of God that the great I am presence of each one should be the victor. And when God has raised you to your mastery, do you know that he will turn over to you the reins of that mastery? And so you shall be a living soul in the paradise of God, eating the fruit of the tree of life, immortalized forever. For only God, only good, can live forever and forever. I thank you.